today we're going to talk about white balance and I'm going to show you guys the three best ways that I've found to properly set white balance within your camera and stick around because I'm also going to show you a pretty cool trick on how you can manipulate the white balance within your camera to trick it into doing something like this. Ready? Let's check it out. So what better to bring in the new year than to update the camera rig? Let's check it out. Out of all the things that I've spent doing when it comes to video, the number one thing I've spent the most time on is learning how to color grade and color correct. And mainly because I've made so many mistakes that I've spent countless hours in post that could have easily been avoided if I would have just taken the time to set the white balance correctly in camera to begin with. Now, the first thing that I wanna tell you guys before I get into all the different ways to white balance is do not use auto white balance. Now, you may already know that, that maybe why you're watching this video. If you don't, it's okay, I'm not hating on you, but don't use auto white balance. It's an easy way to ruin your footage. Your, your white balance will shift in the middle of your shoot and it will be totally noticeable to your viewers. So don't use auto white balance. One of the first methods for setting white balance is to use one of the built-in presets. Now, this is a Panasonic Lumix G85. Believe it or not, this is a fantastic camera for its price. I did a review of it right up here for you guys. But using one of the built-in presets is definitely a step up from using auto white balance, and it's what most people will begin to use once they, they learn about white balance. Now this one has uh, basic presets just like you'll find in any other camera. It has a daylight preset, a cloud preset, shadow, as well as tungsten. Now if you use these presets in their specified environment, so say tungsten like for these tungsten lights, then that will at least get you within the ballpark for proper white balance. It's not going to be exactly 100% perfect, sometimes it may be, but it'll at least get you close enough to where you have to do minor tweaks within post or you may not even notice it at all. So the first method for setting white balance is to use one of the built-in presets. Now we'll get into something a little bit more advanced. The next way to set our white balance, which is probably the most common method to set white balance, is using what's called a custom white balance. Now, we're actually gonna tell our camera what the color of the light is in our scenario by using something that's called a gray card, either a gray card or a white balance card. But this is just a cheap gray card that I got off of Amazon. You can get these for like 10 bucks. I'll leave links down in the description below for all of this stuff. This one's very convenient because it folds up. A lot of times I'll keep it in my pocket, but you can use either the white side or the gray side. The point is you just need to use something neutral. You can even in a pinch use a white piece of paper, although that's not the uh, most accurate way but you can use either this, or if you wanna get very accurate, you can use something like this. This is a Data Color Spider Checker 24. It's got you know a bunch of color chips, but we're not gonna use that for white balance. You're just gonna use the gray card here. This is gonna be one of the most accurate ways. But what you're gonna do, and again, every camera manufacturer kind of does this a little bit different, so you need to check with your camera on how to set a custom white balance. Lumix makes it very easy. We're just gonna go into the white balance menu, and then you'll see a few labeled one, two, three, four. Those are for setting custom white balances. And you just hit the up arrow to select white balance. And one of the most important things in using this is you need to point it at the light source that you're wanting to white balance to. Like here I have mixed lighting, but I wanna uh, balance the white balance to my key light so I my skin tones look correctly. So I'm gonna point this at the main key light, go into that custom preset menu, and then it's gonna put up a little box. All I do is point at the gray card, hit set and that's it. Now the camera is set to the white balance of the light that's in the room. So the next way using um, a custom white balance is to use something like this, which is a white balance filter. This is not 
as common, uh, but it's still been around for a while and it, it is actually very accurate, a little bit more accurate than using one of these. And there are several different models of white balance filters. You can use either this one, which is again, another cheap one that I got off of Amazon. And the reason why this is more accurate is because we're gonna do that same custom white balance, but we're actually gonna put this over the lens and then point at our light source do that custom white balance and then hit set. Now this takes all the light that's coming into the lens and white balances to that so it's much more accurate where this can have other light that is reflecting on it and you get kind of a little bit of a mixed light and so it may not be as accurate. The third way to set your white balance, which is probably the most advanced way, is to manually set the color temperature in Kelvins. If you don't know what I mean by Kelvins, all light has a color temperature in Kelvin rating associated to it. Like this light is a daylight light and it is set for 5600 Kelvin. Uh, these lights behind me are more of a tungsten light. Some of them are set for 2500 Kelvin, some of them are set for 3300 Kelvin, so we'll just call that 3000 Kelvin but you would need to know the color temperature of your light source in order to manually set it. So like if I was gonna set for this light, then I would go in here and I would set it for 5600 Kelvin. And um, my particular camera does have a, a little gauge that kind of shows me, you know, based on the type of lighting it is where that falls on the scale. But the other way to do it is to use something um, like an app. So this is a light meter app that I have and um, I actually don't use it for the light meter but it, it will tell me what the color temperature is and it's using the sensor on my camera and I can just point it at you know whatever scene I'm going to be shooting at and this little dot in the middle will tell me what the color temperature of that is. It's not super accurate but it, it's pretty close and um, so you can use that. There are some attachments that you can get for like iPhones and things like that, a couple hundred bucks and they will give you a very accurate reading of what the color temperature is. Or you can use what's called a spectrometer. It, it looks very similar to this. This is my light meter, but it will uh, take a very accurate reading of the color that are, are the lights that you're working with. They are also very expensive, um, thousand bucks to 5,000 bucks. So those are the three basic ways that I know to set white balance. Uh, any of those is going to help you get more accurate white balance so you can save yourself tons of time in post. But now I'll kind of show you how I manipulated the scene here earlier using the white balance of my camera to give it that more blue look in the background. So I bet a lot of you guys probably thought I just change those lights in the background to blue, but no, that's that's not actually what I did. I mean, even if you saw some of my previous videos, you probably thought that I just had blue lights back there, but what I'm actually doing is just tricking the white balance within my camera. All those lights behind me are set to 5600 Kelvin, our daylight balanced. The only one that's not is that light right there on the shelf because it's not a bicolor light, so I can't actually change it. And this strip light right here, it's got a little bit of a blue tint to it that's as white as that one will go. But all the rest of the lights, including my key light here, are set to 5600 daylight balanced. And so what I'm doing is I'm screen recording here and I'm going to show you guys the, how I'm going to adjust the white balance. I can't get behind the camera so I have to do it this way. But I'm going to change the white balance on my key light to more of a tungsten light. And you're gonna see me get really orange, but you'll see what I'm gonna do with that in just a second. So it's set to 5600. Now I'm changing that to 3200. And you can see now my skin looks really orange. It just doesn't look right. But all the background here still looks white. And that's because the camera is set to the 5600 daylight. So now this is really warm. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my gray card, which doesn't look very gray at the moment. And I'm gonna set the white balance to this key light, the tungsten color. And that's gonna tell my camera that that is white. And so it's gonna make my skin tones look correct, but it's gonna cool down that background dramatically. So I'm just gonna take the eyedropper here 
point my gray card at the key light, take a sample, and there you go. Now everything looks correct. So you can see my skin tone looks normal. The, you know, I might have a little bit of blue here and there from just spill from the background, but you can see the background is nice and blue, nice and cool. We've got good color separation going on here. This is actually a trick that they use in Hollywood. They, they won't always go that cool in the background, but they'll cool it off a little bit just to give some separation. So I don't blend into the background and things like that. So that's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys thought about that little trick. If you have any questions, if I didn't explain it properly, let me know down below. But that's it for today's video. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up. I will see you guys on the next one. Thanks for stopping by.